Welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created this series to help you understand the basics of property law. This series covers four fundamental questions about property and property law. And today we are talking about the first question, the nature of property. We're talking really specifically about one kind of property, which uh, has come to be known as personhood property. There are many academics, most notably Margaret Jane Radin, uh, who have said that there are some things, that there are some types of property that are so closely connected to one's personhood, one's self, that they cannot be considered property in the normal sense. They are considered to be inalienable. They cannot be transferred or sold on the common market. They cannot be used by someone else. If you think back to the Blackstonian bundle and the right to exclude, personhood is essentially about the right or the necessity of excluding all others from any enjoyment of that particular element of property. This is true in most types of personhood property, even if the person with which the thing is most connected disagrees, even if they want to sell something or transfer ownership or give someone else the use of it, they cannot. There are a few kinds of things which may fit the description of personhood property. So the first is the human body, including body parts, dead bodies, and organs. If we believe that the body and self are intimately and inextricably connected, then we might believe that the human body is the most inalienable of all the types of property we own. The second type of personhood property involves fruits of a certain kind of labor and particularly the results of a person's work which are so expressive of herself as an individual that she will always have some rights in that product of work. The third type of personhood property I thought you should know about involves cultural objects. Objects which are so expressive of group culture that ownership must be vested in the group whose culture the objects represent. The fourth type of person and property that I'd like to mention today are heirlooms, your grandmother's brooch, a collection of family photos and the like. So let's talk a little bit more about that first category of personhood property, uh, property as it relates to the human body. As you no doubt know, we are a nation where the law once allowed people to own other people, people as property, slavery. There is no greater violation of personhood than slavery, the imprisonment, the treatment as if one were subhuman. For centuries, a property law in our country virtually eliminated personhood for enslaved peoples. In addition, through the doctrine of accession, it eliminated personhood for their children too. Accession means that the increase of something you own is also yours. It's often used to describe uh, crops or uh, farm animals and their offspring. But in this dark shadow of our past, uh, our modern legal system uh, does protect the body in several ways. We are protected against seizure. We're protected against false imprisonment. Uh, the men among us are no longer drafted to go to war. These concepts might seem basic and, and are pretty easily understood. But in the context of personhood property, it's important to understand that there is a whole frontier, new questions that are being raised uh, from modern technology and the impact of modern technology on what might have otherwise been considered personhood property. So what about certain products of the body that we know have been reduced to ownership like sperm or eggs or plasma? What about embryos which have been the subject of litigation in divorce settlements? What about surrogate children, uh, another subject of recent legal disputes often considered within a property law framework? All of these issues uh, raise the question of whether personhood theory should, it does continue to govern, govern our legal systems or uh, whether we're considering a different approach. So that question is something we will all grapple with in the years ahead. 
So I'll leave it there. I'd love to hear from you, whether on Twitter or through my website, where you can sign up to my mailing list. See you next time.